Well, he's okay. He's in, no, so it gets better. Okay. So there's this hole called Dutch Courage. So you have to get your ball, the golf ball, through two giant windmills. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, but then here's the twist because it's extreme mini golf. Because mm-hmm. the, the two windmills aren't enough. There's no, you more. have to go. You the, the golfer also has to go through the two windmills. If you don't time it right, you're going to get knocked on your ass. So what you're saying is you have to follow your ball. Yep, you have to follow the ball through the two windmills, and if you don't, you get knocked on your ass. And let me tell you something. People get knocked on their ass hard. Uh, You know what? I've gotten knocked on my ass every time I follow my balls. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) You've, um... I'm... You left some bait there, (laughs) and I'm not going to follow it. Because... I don't want Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, because I want to keep I want to keep the show going. Good for you. And I admire you as a human being. Oh. You're my friend, you're my oh. fork bite. So I don't want to say what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um so and then but part of what makes it fun is Rob Riggle. That's okay. pretty much why I watch the show anyway. Right. But there's this other hole called a distractor. <laughs> there's the, there's so, always the other hole. <laughs> Dude, stop. You're, you're, Call you're, the distractor. You're making it too easy. <laughs> when you start talking about holes, <laughs> you're making it way too easy. So anyway, so uh, on the distractor, mm-hmm. it's a 15-foot putt, but there's a wall, and then the wall turns around. Could you around. hit it sideways? So the wall <laughs> turns around, and there will be something in there to distract you. Okay. So in the first episode... Because it's because it was a pilot, they got like some big game person to distract you from making your fifteen foot putt. It was Kenny fucking G, <laughs> <laughs> the king of smooth of smooth jazz. The king of smooth jazz, Mister. I think it's the alto sax he plays. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. it's it's literally like, like it's the funnest. It's just fun for me. Like it. For about 45 minutes, minus commercials, I don't have to think. And it's wonderful. I can imagine doing a lot of not thinking watching Holy Moly. I I just, you know, you have Hulu. I do. And while I'm not going to... No, I'm plugging this damn show, damn it. Okay. Like, if you just want... It's like 45 minutes of dumb meditation where you don't have to worry about anything in the world. Okay. And I'll tell you what, Steph Curry mm-hmm. can can hit a fucking wedge <laughs> like nobody's business. Okay, because there's a hole where he or you get to choose between a robot or Steph Curry to chip your ball into a sunken court. Stop it, dude! Don't make ball jokes. It's golf. What else is there to do? It's mini golf. Okay. It's for the children. Okay. But it's you're not gonna watch it. But that's fine. But I'm I want probably some, not. I, I fold. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna watch it. But I want someone. I want someone on Twitter, or on the Instagrams, mm-hmm. or on the email at whattheforkpod at gmail dot com, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just to say, Jason, I'm with you on holy moly. Hashtag holy moly yes. Yes. Hashtag holy moly yes. Mm-hmm. And we'll do it. So, I mean, no one's going to do it because every time we try to do anything with a hashtag. Yeah. 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 It fails I don't know. Miserably. I don't know how we're. This is the most listened to podcast that I do and has the least interaction with people. I know. I'm just saying. And we, and we encourage. Guys, it. buddies, fork buddies, you're letting us down. Yeah. Hashtag holy moly yes. Hashtag. Um. Summer school. <laughs> I mean, I've worked for the New Times for almost a month now. Yeah. I have not been blocked by Carrie Lake. I have I'm not sorry. Been, I have uh, not been blocked by Sheriff Joe. Ah, uh, that's a bummer. And I have tried. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens. I shouldn't say Sheriff Joe. It'll happen to you someday. If Chuck Windig will block you, I'm sure somebody... That's, that's the thing that boggles my mind. 
how I've been blocked by Chuck Wendig, mm-hmm. and I have not been blocked by like somebody you've directly attacked, like someone who I've like directly like you know been insufferable to. So, so since you've become culture editor of the Phoenix New Times, have you tried to reapproach Mr. Wendig? I have not mm. since I've become culture editor, mm-hmm. but I have like called them out like hey dude like, don't know what i did you sorry me. but yeah and this was inspired by um uh jamila el jamil mm. she intentionally blocked somebody because mm-hmm. i and someone said hey he blocked me i don't know why i've never done anything mm-hmm. to you and she released the block so i said hey i don't know what i did to you check one dig mm-hmm but I would love to be in on your awesomeness. So what you're saying is Chuck Wendig is less forgiving than Jamila Mal Jamil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Of course, if he's listening, mm-hmm. he's not going to unblock me. Why not? Just talk about how much you love Star Wars. I do love Star Wars, <laughs> but I'm not going to. I know he probably had to rush through those books he wrote. Mm. I didn't necessarily enjoy them. You know what? The first one I liked, okay, I haven't read the other ones yet. Oh. I mean... And I'm actually really sad that his Vader storyline did not get released because of political reasons. I mean, he's no Timothy Zahn. Few people are. Right. But Timothy Zahn also doesn't uh, have a good back and forth with Sam Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does not. Mm-hmm. Um which Sam Sykes has not blocked me yet. Mm-hmm. So, and I follow him on the Twitter. Mm-hmm. So, but right, we've got like two minutes left of this. Show. I know, dude. We're so close. Let's get to Let's it. Let's do it. More importantly, Jason just arrived in Australia. The four of them are finally together. Oh, we did it, Janet. We got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our MRI machine. Oh, don't don't touch that. Um, each of you will get a chance in here eventually. Hopefully, none of you is claustrophobic. Claustrophobic? Who would ever be scared of Santa Claus? Oh, <laughs> the Jewish. Huh? <laughs> Jacksonville. Yeah, that should be fine for me. It's roughly the same size as Nicole Kidman's cryogenic anti-aging chamber. Oh, she can not sure it's on the crats. Oh, yeah. I'll be okay, too. Oh, reminds me of the home tanning booth oh I think he's the host, the isn't he? Oh, no, he's not. I cannot Mm-mm. wait to take a look at these three brains. Oh, forgot to mention, there's one more person who will be joining us. Seems like a really interesting guy. He was almost run over by a train a few months ago. Heard about the study. Emailed me last night. This doesn't make any sense. They're all there. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, no. What is it? Something... Bad, Janet. Something very dark and evil. <laughs> oh, yes. Come on in. Hey, everyone. This is Trevor. Hey, guys. It is so <laughs> great to meet you. Oh. Uh-huh. All right. So that we're back into it. Season three. Yeah. How did you feel about the opener? Um... We talked a lot about a lot of things, and much of it was not about the season three opener. <laughs> but did, but I feel like we talked about a lot, but I think we kept it like, you know. Anyway, I mean, it's still... Uh, it's it's good to opener. see the band back together. Yeah. It's a solid opener. It's fun to see everybody kind of coming together. Um you know, I, as I'm watching it, I'm remembering more about what is in season three, and I'm looking forward to to that unfolding. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to be watching the show again. Yes, it's I'm, been a while. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. <laughs> no, <laughs> stop. Did you just do a stained? No. Yes, you did. No, you did. You can't prove it. I did. No, it's on tape. <laughs> Is this going to be the one episode you edit? No. <laughs> I edit nothing. Um, that's not true. But, uh, oh boy, I can't. I might have to edit that out. I'm not going to, though. Uh, are you going to go Alice in Chains and Corn this weekend? What? Are you going to go see Alice in Chains and Corn this weekend? 
No one know. I figured like you're been secretly new metal all this time. Oh boy! No, 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 no. Do you? I, I mean, I I like Alice in Chains as you should. Uh, prior to Lane Staley's death, I, um, I, I've heard reports that the new singer is pretty much like a dead ringer for him. Isn't it a guy from? Isn't it the guy from Lincoln Park? Mm, I don't know. Wasn't it Lincoln Park? I I'm probably getting that all messed up. Well, I have not listened to them. Sadly, since Chester Bennington has passed away too. That's the lead singer from Lincoln Park. Oh, I didn't know that. Who was on Stone Temple Pilots for a while? Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Wow. No, I think the new lead singer or the lead singer who replaced Lane Stanley is black. Hmm. I believe, but he's like a dead ringer for him. Weird. Um, what? Yeah, dude. Okay. Anyway. Um, and I know you're a huge corn fan. Ay, 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 ay. I am. I'm not a fan of any band that replaces the uh, proper letter for a word with the letter K. Are you a freak on a leash? A what? Are you a freak on a leash? That's a corn song. I don't man. even know that. Oh my gosh. How you... Apparently you know more about corn than I do. Well, uh, or is stained. I like the tortillas. Yeah. I actually know stained is somewhat associated with Lump Biscuit. Hmm. Are you a Lump Biscuit fan? No. No, no, no. no. Not down with the Durst? No. And his porn boat or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Um so, um, but um, have you seen he has a new movie? Fred uh, Durst? Yes. No. So he directed this movie with John Travolta in it. That makes sense. And it's like he's an obsessive fan. Of Travolta? No. So Travolta is the obsessive fan. Is this supposed to echo the one where like De Niro is the obsessed fan? The baseball fan? Yes. Mm. Except the fan, he's a fan of this actor. Is that just called the fan? Yeah. Okay. And he's an obsessive fan of this Hollywood actor. And is Durst the actor? No. So Durst directed this. Mm. And the actor is Devin Sawa. I don't know who that is. He's um, in the first Final Destination movie. I didn't watch that. Um, yeah. Okay. Has Travolta done anything of note let's say since face off <laughs> yeah he battlefield earth i said of note i think it's okay of note. good note <laughs> <laughs> um he's in a few good decent ones but he was in that oj movie yes he's in, which is ryan murphy full circle okay um, tying it's it's the rug that's tying the room together. It is. John Travolta is the rug. That, Ryan Murphy. Uh, Ryan is Murphy's the rug, the technically. Yeah. Together. I think he's gone the way of Nick Cage, his face-off co-star. But, but Nick, Nick Cage, Cage has done up. has done some decent things. Mandy is. Uh, I still haven't seen Mandy. I don't think you'd like it. Probably not. It's a horror film, right? Kind of. It's more like horror action. Is it revenge porn? No. Okay. It's like Evil Dead on LSD. (laughs) Okay. It's like Evil Dead 2 on LSD. Wow. It's trippy, man. It is wonderful. It's funny that we're talking about Evil Dead 2 under the poster of High Fidelity. What would you think if she said, I hadn't seen Evil Dead 2 yet? I think she's gonna watch it <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking but, know Rob <laughs> but the word yet yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Rob <laughs> oh god I've not watched that movie in so long did you were you one of the people that went to the sold out say anything screening with Mr. Cusack no and that would have been a perfect time to like work a connection mm-hmm mm-hmm because, but I'm not that guy. So I think that was also at was that also at Chandler Center for the Performing Arts. It was. 
All right. Where we're going to see Squeeze in a couple of weeks? It is. Chandler Sanford, The Arts.